chip of the day. Chip of the day is an IRF350. Okay, so this is a high-powered FET, and IR stands for uh, International Rectifier. So International Rectifier must have been purchased by Infineon, it's part of them now. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty, pretty uh, famous parts. I don't think they make these any longer, but they're nice to have around for, for fixing things. Um, and so I have the um, uh, IFR 350 right, right here. And we'll talk about it, but there's a whole bunch of IRF parts. Um, here's an IRF 450 that I had in my bin. Here's an IRF uh, 260 that I had in my bin. Um, but we'll take a look at these, 1985, so they're fairly old parts. It's much better FETs these days, but like I said again, it's good to have them for fixing things. Um, so this guy here uh, is in a TO3 package. Now, just a brief mention of TO3 packages. They got renamed to TO204 AAs, uh, trying to standardize, right? Everybody knows them as TO3s, but I don't think they're used anymore. Um, I think everybody uses these, these big packages here. Um, I think they probably have the same heat capability as this, and they're much easier. You can solder them to PC boards, and the heat sinks are just flat. It just it seems like it's much easier to to use these guys. All right, uh, so this guy here is a 400 volt, uh, 14 amp, 0.3 ohms on. Uh, so he's good for switching wacka wacka wacka. And so it's good for switching power supplies, motor controls, inverters, choppers, um, audio amplifiers, class D, and uh, high energy pulse systems. So yeah, these things are really meant to go wacka wacka. Uh, so they say that the uh, features a repetitive avalanche rating, so you can just really uh, smack it on and off, and it's, uh, it's kind of rated for that. All right, so let's take a look at some specs here. So uh, common specs, uh, 400 volt minimum for one milliamp. Uh, let's see here, 0.3 ohms at nine amps and 0.4 ohms at 14 amps. So there you go. Um, yeah, I guess they, I guess they, they, don't, they did a great in the top data sheet, the top data sheet, didn't they? Let's see, let me go back, let me go back. No, they did lie, they did lie. So, um, when you read data sheets, you really have to read them closely because the marketing guys get a hold of them and really botch them up. So it says here, you know, at 400 volts at 0.3 ohms, 14 amps, and those are all true things, but not at the same time, right? <laughs> so you can see it in this spec here. Um, yes, it will be 0.3 ohms, but only at nine amps. And it's 0.4 volt, uh, point, uh, ohms, ohms. It's 0.3 ohms at 9 amps and 0.4 ohms at 14 amps, okay? So, yeah, they just, uh, they're just they not really lying. They're just kind of making the numbers look better than... I don't know why, because wh why do they need to make it look better? Because the, uh, the, 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 the engineers are going to take a close look at these things. But anyway, uh, now, this was for the transistor, okay? Inside these parts, where's the picture? Um, yeah, so inside these parts is a, is a, a, a biased, back biased uh, diode, right? And so if anything tries to go this direction, it'll go through it and it'll block anything going this direction. So it's sort of a protection diode uh, to save the, save the FET from pulses and stuff. So there's a specification on that diode. That is the source drain diode. It's also good for 14 amps, uh, of course. Uh, and at uh, 14 amps, its forward voltage is 1.7 volts, okay? Which is okay for a protection diode, but it will warm up. Uh, here are the typical um, drain to source current. So this is current versus voltage. And um, so these are um, voltage-based devices, and they're not current-based devices, so you bias them with voltages. So four and a half, five, five and a half, and six, here's the, here's the curves. We'll put it on the curve trace here and see if we can replicate one or two of these. Um, and you have a set of curves for a temperature of 25C and another set of temperatures for 150C, so you can see how they change. 
change with temperature. All right, so uh, let's compare it to an, another part that I had in my bin, which was the 450. You think, oh, 450 is better. <laughs> that was 350, this one's 450. Um, well, it's 500 volts, 0. 0.4 ohms, and 12 amps. So just higher voltage, probably the same part, just, <laughs> just uh, classified differently. Um, anyway. Like I said, uh, nobody's, I don't think anybody's using, raise your hand if you're still using TO3s, but I think uh, you're using these guys. So here's the data sheet for that guy. Uh, he is a uh, international rectifier 260i and FP, I think P is probably plastic. Um, 260. So this is a TO247AC. Okay, that's what these guys are. But you can see that it's a 50 amp. Yeah, this one's 50 amps. So, yeah, um, they're fine. They're fine. Let's see. Look at the wattage of these things. So this one is is rated at 300 watts. This one's rated at 150 watts. It's and it's in the TO3. And the other one was rated at uh, 150 watts. Yeah, so this one is, is like way better. So it's probably just a newer part or whatever, but the packages shouldn't hold you back. I just wouldn't use TO3s any longer. Enough of that. All right, let's, uh, let's see if these things work. Got my little tester here. Uh, let's see, this is the 350. Uh, let's go ahead and hook it up. Uh, I don't know. Let's hook it up here. That one, that one, and this one. All right. And there you go. Uh, yeah, it even draws a little diode and everything. Real nice. What does it say? Uh, it turned on at 3.8 volts had 0.6 ohms on resistance. Yeah, anyway, there you go. Um, let's go ahead and pop one on the uh, curve tracer, right? Okay, I'm gonna be using this test socket here, which is a TO66, TO3 dual test socket. And um, lucky for us, the way that these work is you pop them in here and then the uh, case is with this little pin here if you can see it. Anyway, it's popped in here and it's the right pin out. Uh, collector emitter base. It's it's actually um, uh, drain, uh, gate, and source, right? Or source, I'm sorry, source and gate. Um, all right, let's put it on. All right, uh, we have it over here. So you flip the switch to that side. It's two, either this one or that one. Um, and uh, we are going to be uh, using the NPN for the N-type channel FET, but instead of, um, let's see here, we need lots of volts, let's see, uh, let's go here, uh, and we're going to be stepping volts instead of, instead of stepping current. So this knob here, um, it's milliamps over here and microamps over here, but you go way over and then it turns into volts, okay? So let's put it down here, one, one volt per step. Let's do that. And let's turn this thing on and see if it works. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, and we have one amp per division. So this is, uh, let's see, we want to do Let's see, let's, can we go up higher? Yeah, this is kind of tricky with these things. FETs, it's a bit tricky to get exactly the right voltage. There is offsets and stuff. My machine uh, is a bit finicky about offsets. It does have its troubles, but let's see if we can't, if we can't figure it out here. Okay, five. Oh, it's starting to turn up there. What's going on there? Oh, it's starting to turn a little bit. Let's uh, let's go down in volts here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's starting to turn up a little bit. 
Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, let's see here. We are at five steps. One step. This is a five volt. This is the five volt line for the uh, the gate source voltage for the five volt line. The five volt line in the data sheet. Let's look at that. Let's look at the data sheet. The five volt line was. How was this one here? Right at about. 10 amps and we're right at about 5 amps. So what's the deal here? What's the deal? Oh, Jesus, it's getting hot. <laughs> no, no heat sink. That's the deal. No heat sink. So we can use the 150 volt one. So the 5 volt line is going to be around 7 amps. So yeah, it's just because I don't have a heat sink. Because I don't have the heat sink. That's one of the problems with these things is um, it's hard to put a TO3 heatsink on the curve tracer, right? So you have to be kind of, and that's why it was, that's why it was turning up on us. So we're going along here and then it's starting to bend up. That's when it's starting to get hot at the end. But anyway, it's acting as a FET. So there you go. Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's look at the diode. Remember I said there's a diode in the other direction? So let's, uh, Ooh, that's still hot. Let me grab a different one. <laughs> I want to grab that one. Okay. That one was still hot. So emitter, uh, let's see, this is ground. So we'll put it on the, let's see, it's going the other way. So the ground we want to have on the, on the drain. And then we want to have this one on the source. I think I'm doing that right. Let's see. And there's no other way. No, it's the other way. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't have it flicked over. Yeah, there we go. I didn't have this, didn't have the switch moved over to this, this connector here. Yeah, there we go. So change the voltage here. Uh, we're at uh, one volt per step. Um, and we're at amps. So we're at three amps. We're at uh, two volts. I guess that's two volts. Uh, five. No, we're at one volt. Yeah, we're at one volt. Sorry. So one volt at three amps. And if I take it up here to 10 amps, we're at about 1.6 volts, right? So just like the data sheet, a lot of resistance in the, uh, in the diode. I don't know if you're playing along at home, but you remember when I repaired this thing, it didn't match collector base emitter. Two of them were swapped and it just, I couldn't quite figure out why. I may know, I may know why. Um, if you are going to test these guys, uh, which is a nice, nice for this particular test socket, um, then the pinout isn't, isn't correct. You would need to swap a couple of these to, uh, to make the pinout correct to test FETs, because uh, they are a different, they are different. Let's see here. Here it is. It is a gate, gate drain source, gate drain source. So you can see here the, the gate, it would be the base and a drain source. So you'd need to swap collector base uh, in order to test these guys, uh, like a so. And, uh, yeah, so maybe that's why it was done, but then they didn't change the label, but it looked like it was factory. So I don't know. I'm still confused. Maybe that they wired it for one particular thing. They put the wrong label on it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Uh, anyway, this was chip of the day, uh, IRF 350 plus a couple other thrown in.